Hi stamping friends, welcome to Melissa's Crafting Treehouse. In this video we'll create a double point fold card, which is a fun fold card that opens in two ways. This is a club and free card kit project that features the Thoughtful Bloom stamp set and the Coordinating Small Bloom punch. Both of these items are free with qualifying orders during Celebration. Celebration is the biggest promotion of the Stampin' Up! year. Customers get free products with qualifying orders. Hostesses get a free stamp set just for them with qualifying parties. And when you buy the starter kit, you get three extra perks in addition to the great value of the starter kit already. So to get started, the first thing we're going to do is create the focal piece. And there are lots of little pieces and parts to this, but we're going to start with the planter element. So I'm using my tailored tag punch and I'm going to line it up against the edge of my cardstock to basically punch half of that shape. Now you could punch out the whole shape and cut it down the middle, but I like to do it against the edge of the cardstock to take advantage of that straight edge and uh, you waste a little bit less cardstock. Next, I'm going to use the long squiggly image there with my Memento black ink to stamp three of those images on the front of the planter to create a little bit of a pattern. Next, I'm bringing in my Big Shot and I'm going to die cut one of my stitched nested labels dies, the one I'm going to use for my focal piece. And I like to put a piece of paper down between my cardstock and the cutting plate just to make sure there's no residual scraps of paper on the cutting plate that might get onto my focal piece. And I do this especially when I'm using a white piece of cardstock that is more at risk of getting dirty. To get started with my stamping, I'm going to take uh, the one biggest image in the set and stamp it on my focal piece. Now I've put down my planter so I can gauge my spacing and I'm putting that image just slightly at an angle and you can see I've got a spray of foliage uh, with just that one stamp. Next I'm coming in with my Smoky Slate ink and I'm going to stamp one of those uh, images, the branch image if you will, in between each of the four shapes created by the black foliage. Next I'll use my Real Red ink with the berries image and it's a spray of berries that are designed to stamp directly over those images I stamped in the smoky slate. I think of it as sort of an A shape um, because the berries sort of create a shape that wraps around and lines up with each of the elements on that smoky slate image. So now I've stamped all four of my sets of berries and now I've got a tiny little floral image that's red. I'm going to stamp it in the real red at the end of four different spots, four branches on the black foliage or maybe five. To finish off my focal piece I'm going to stamp and punch out some flowers to place over the top and I'm going to do some multi-layered stamping on these. So I'm starting with that main solid image and I'm going to ink it up in real red and I'm going to stamp it off and do that three times. And then I'm going to take a variety of the other images in the set and lay them over the top of the solid images that I have there already. So there I just stamped the little striped flower, if you will, in full real red ink over the top of that first flower. And now I've taken also first inking of a smaller red flower and stamped that in the middle of the second one, the one right there in the middle. And now I'm taking this little itty bitty black image 
and stamping it in the center of the image on the left and also the one in the middle. And finally, I've taken the tiniest little black image, the little flower center, and stamped it over that first flower on the right. So then, of course, I'm just going to punch each of those out, centering them in the opening of the punch so that I can see where I'm punching and just punching them out so they have an even edge all around. Now I'm going to attach my flowers uh, with dimensionals and glue dots. Um, and I'm going to use a glue dot on one of the flowers and dimensionals on two of them. And I'm using my little itty bitty dimensionals so that they don't show. Uh, they're perfect for this sort of application when you have a very small piece of paper that you're attaching. And uh, now I'm just going to get my third element ready for the front of this focal piece, which is my real red satin ribbon there. So I've just tied a knot and I'm going to trim off the ends. And then I'm going to go ahead and attach that with glue dots. So it's positioned to cover up where the planter and the flower flowers in the flower pot meet. So I'm attaching my ribbon to the top of the planter. I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back side of the planter. And then I'll go ahead and attach that just below the flower arrangement. And then I'll adjust the positioning of my stamped punched flowers where I want them, laying it all out. And then I'll go ahead and attach and commit to the positioning of each of those elements. Now, when I was initially designing this focal piece, I used the largest of the stitched nested labels dies. And uh, as I was designing, I realized I wanted to have a layer in behind my focal piece. So I created a second one that was slightly smaller. That's the one on the left. The one I created is uh, the one on the right there. So by doing this, I was able to use the larger die to create a black layer that would go in behind my smaller focal piece. So if you get one of these card kits in the mail, you'll be receiving the smaller die cut on the, in the white, Whisper White card stock with the larger black backing. So that will change the spacing of the stamping just a bit. So you'll have less white space above the floral element and less white space, of course, below the planter as well. So next I'm going to move on to how I created the double point fold element. So I've got a piece of designer paper here that measures three inches by four inches and I'm scoring uh, at the one inch line uh, along the four inch side. And I'm just going to fold along that score line and then I'm going to fold in the bottom two edges to create the point. Now when I fold this, uh, I like to not come all the way up to the top crease just so that there's a little bit of room there to fold around the real red cardstock uh, when you assemble the card. Now I'm going to use my bone folder to burnish those edges so they're nice and crisp. And um, now ideally you want your triangle to come to a point, but if it doesn't quite work out that way, um, one of the sides will be covered once we assemble the point. Uh, so you can put that one on the hidden side if that happens. So now I'm just putting adhesive on that back flap and attaching it to my real red cardstock piece, centering it on there so it completes the whole space side to side. And now I'm just doing the second side. So as I mentioned at the beginning, this Funfold card opens in two ways. So next I'm going to start assembling the focal piece and show you both ways that it opens. So I'm just going to attach that focal piece to its black backing. Now one of the sides of this focal piece is going to be attached with adhesive and the other is going to attach with a magnet. And so there I'm showing you the magnet sheets that I use. So I cut two strips of my magnet sheet off to about one inch width 
and then I put them back to back so that the magnetized side, the black side, um, was matched up with the other black side. Uh, that's just to make sure that the magnets actually attract one another. So you have to play with it a little bit and um, get it into the right position. So I'm going to start with removing the white backing on one side and I'm going to place it on the back side of the bottom of my focal piece, the bottom point. And next I'm going to put adhesive on the top point on the back side of the focal piece. And then I'm going to go ahead and find my position, centering it top to bottom and side to side, and go ahead and attach it just at the top. And last but not least, I just need to remove that white backing, exposing the adhesive on the second side of the magnet, and then just place it down on my work surface and press it flat to adhere that second magnet. And now you can see that there's a magnet on both sides and it's in exactly the right spot so that those magnets attract one another. And now I am just attaching down those flaps of the triangle because I hadn't done that previously. Now my front is complete and that is the opening number one. So I'm just putting adhesive on the back side and attaching it to my card base. It's a basic black card base. And then I've got one more quick thing to do. I'm going to stamp a sentiment from the same set that I'm using, the Thoughtful Bloom stamp set, on a piece of Whisper White cardstock with Memento Black ink. And then I'm going to punch that out with a circle punch. And then I'm going to use my Starburst punch to punch out a black backing for my sentiment piece. So now all I need to do is attach those two pieces together and then attach it to the inside of the card right there so that it's directly under the focal piece uh, when it's closed. Now this card also opens in the traditional way and I'm going to put a Whisper White piece of cardstock uh, on the second inside. And of course that's where you can write your note. I hope you've enjoyed my project today. If you'd like dimensions or a supply list, you can find that in my blog post. There's a link in the video description below. As a reminder, this is one of my club and free card kit projects. Click on the link in the video description to learn how you can get free card kits. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks so much for joining me today, and happy crafting!